So this is the third section. Uh, just to recap the overall uh, structure of Monai. At the low level, uh, there are some basic building components. Oftentimes, they are uh, direct extensions of PyTorch APIs or directly uh, evoking uh, NumPy or PyTorch APIs. So this means they could be easily integrated uh, into a PyTorch-based program. So we maintain a good code readability and keep the APIs uh, uh, easy to use. So for, for each module, we often focus on a simple and decoupled object, uh, which is very flexible. The goal here is at this level, as every component should only do one small thing and do it well, as opposed to have a gigantic class providing options for all possible tasks. So you don't need to understand the overall uh, architecture in order to use uh, these basic components. So at this level, they are kind of uh, handy utility functions. So it could be very helpful uh, for building your research prototypes. So on top of that, uh, we have workflow implementations based on PyTorch Ignite. So when the a general pipeline of your research prototype is ready, you may want to use these workflows uh, to reduce the number of lines of Python code in your research code base so that you can focus on uh, novel research ideas and no need to go through this boilerplate code uh, such as constructing a, a training loop again and again. So it also makes your research code more uh, maintainable. On, on top of these uh, workflows, uh, we build task specific uh, applications. This could be useful as uh, ready to use uh, baselines or to study the usage and architecture of Monai. So we also include a research repository. Uh, this is to demonstrate the cutting edge uh, technology uh, in, the, in our uh, medical imaging domain. Uh, we, we also would like to use it to uh, promote open or produce, reproducible science. Yeah. So uh, this section, uh, we are going to focus uh, at this level for the basic components. Uh, I will highlight uh, some components or detailed usages for the data sets, uh, caching, and pre-processing, post-processing transforms. And also in the notebook, I will uh, cover the uh, sliding window inferences and also a bit about uh, visualizations. So the data set APIs are based on uh, the PyTorch uh, built-in data set object. So we have essential extensions uh, of the data set uh, in Monai data set and zip data set and array data set. We also build uh, this kind of uh, generic caching mechanism to accelerate uh, data item fetching. So Pre-processing uh, is oftentimes the bottleneck of the pipeline, uh, especially for uh, medical imaging and deep learning. So these implementations could uh, uh, improve the training speed. At a slightly uh, higher level in terms of uh, functionality, so we have a uh, ready to use decathlon dataset, for example. So there are more details about these APIs uh, on our uh, documentation website. But I will explain uh, some of the detailed usages here. Uh, the recap of the basics of Monai dataset. It has two uh, input data and transform. Uh, data is just a sequence of Python objects. For example, the lists uh, or a tuple of uh, uh, images. And the transform uh, is optional. And uh, the dataset supports queries uh, of for, uh, the size of the, your data collection and also support the uh, indexing. The transform should be a callable uh, function in this minimal form. Or by using a Monai Compose transform, it could be a stack of multiple transforms. It's so-called uh, transform chain. So this is a typical usage. The data collection is a list of uh, image file names indicating the actual uh, images are stored somewhere uh, 
uh, in a specific medical image format. Uh, we could write a pre-processing uh, function to read these uh, files uh, into memory and apply some pre-processing. And then after defining Monai uh, data set we, uh, uh, with the sequence input and uh, customized uh, uh, transformation, uh, this could be uh, directly used uh, with uh, a PyTorch building data loader. So for many of uh, many epochs of training, we sample a small subset of images from the data set, do pre-processing on the fly, and then uh, send uh, the retrieved uh, items uh, to the device where uh, the model will apply some further operations on this uh, small batch uh, data. So when we call, uh, construct this data set and call this uh, indexing method, uh, for example, it's actually doing the, these steps. So finding the corresponding uh, file names uh, according to the index and parsing the specific medical imaging format. And then, uh, for example, apply some intensity normalization uh, and transform and some additional uh, random augmentation for uh, during training and then return uh, the data that is could be directly used uh, by the model. So these are uh, basic concepts of data set. If you are familiar with uh, torch vision, uh, we are essentially following uh, the PyTorch idea. So if we uh, consider the caching mechanism is to improve the performance of the pre-processing. So there are three variants of caching. All of them are essentially uh, trading com computational space uh, for, for time. Let's go back to the regular data set. Uh, every time we want to fetch the ice item into memory. So this apply transform command could be uh, computationally uh, expensive, but some of them are deterministic, meaning uh, for multiple epochs of training, they always return uh, the same output uh, given the same uh, index. So some of the uh, randomized augmentations might be different uh, in different epochs. Uh, so the caching idea uh, is essentially uh, allocating additional space to memorize the uh, intermediate uh, transform outcome. So if the queried uh, index item is already in the cache, the dataset would reuse the content and return the uh, corresponding uh, transform outcome uh, directly. So the cache will only store uh, the outcome of the last uh, non-random uh, transform. So when using this model, uh, or using this part, uh, it's important to put all the deterministic transforms before any uh, randomized ones. So for the different versions of uh, caching dataset uh, in Monai, uh, they essentially implement different ways uh, of uh, where we put the, the, uh, the content. So the basic one is just uh, allocating uh, caching space in memory. So when you quit uh, the Python program, the cache will disappear. But uh, here uh, for the persistent cache, uh, they are actually writing the transform result to, to disk. The indexing uh, is actually based on the hash of the file names so that they are more, so you can retrieve them more reliably, uh, even if uh, you switch uh, to another uh, machine. So it's useful uh, in the case where uh, you have a relatively large content uh, as output of your transform and you don't have enough RAM. And also, because the, it stores the results uh, persistently, so it uh, could be shared among uh, different uh, research experiments or uh, even uh, different uh, setups as long as you use the same uh, pre-processing pipeline. 
but uh, we need to be careful here if we uh, modify those non-randomized transforms, we need to regenerate uh, the cache. So in this case, you just remove uh, the previous uh, cache files or specify another uh, location when you start uh, create an instance of the data set. Okay, so when we don't have enough RAM to, to hold a, a in-memory cache data set, one option is to just uh, cache part of it and use the regular loading for the rest of, 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 of for the rest of the data set. A smart cache uh, is a way, it's actually from uh, NVIDIA's uh, Clara train, uh, it's just to use the, to accelerate uh, the training in this situation. So for every epoch, it will only use the subset of the data collection for training. So uh, this subset uh, is cached, but uh, we also want to have some random samples from the entire data set to ensure uh, it is fully used for training. Uh, so smart cache is uh, essentially uh, starts a background thread to replace the cache items with the, so replace it, re replace some of the items with previously not cached ones. So for example, if uh, you have a, a collection of 100 items, if you set the cache number to 50, in every app, it will only use 50 items for training. But in each epoch, uh, the items uh, could be different because uh, uh, there's a background replacement uh, thread. So here we set a uh, replace rate to 10%, which means uh, it will replace five items in the cache for every epoch. Uh, but the best performance or uh, in terms of speed or the model quality depend on the specific tasks. So, so you will need to uh, try a few different values uh, to achieve the best uh, re result. So this chart uh, shows you uh, time comparisons of uh, spleen segmentation from CT. And we use some uh, essential transformations um, apart from this uh, random cropping, uh, all the others are deterministic uh, transforms, so could be cached. Uh, this is a showing a regular data set uh, uh, without any uh, acceleration. And uh, in memory cache, uh, we will have uh, significant uh, uh, improvement uh, of the training speed. And uh, as you can see here, the persistent one will uh, take a slightly uh, longer time um, for the training because uh, it, it is uh, reading the data from, from hard drive. So uh, these are uh, relatively improvement for, for or the uh, epochs, so the more epochs you, you train, uh, the more relative uh, speed up uh, it will have. Okay, so, so zip dataset is another utility uh, that is group uh, the input for, from multiple datasets. This could be used for, uh, for supervised training. For example, you have image and label pairs or pairwise training um, for example, for, for image uh, registration tasks. So just wanted to highlight uh, that we could have additional transforms here um, for the grouped input. For example, we may want to use the same set of uh, um, random uh, parameters across different sources. Okay, so at a high level, um, when I provide uh, uh, this ready to use API for, for public data set. It supports uh, automatic data downloading and training validation uh, splits. And more recently we had a, we had uh, this cross validation wrapper for this data set so that we can dynamically fetch the cross validation fault uh, when we set up experiments. Also, uh, this data set uh, supports the building uh, caching mechanism. 
So that was about a data set. And uh, for the transformation APIs, uh, you've seen a few examples, the array-based transformation, dictionary-based uh, in the previous notebooks. And uh, just want to highlight uh, that array-based uh, transform is, uh, is just a callable. And we assume the f uh, data format is uh, channel first and uh, the rest will be the uh, spatial dimensions. The exception is for the post-processing transforms. We assume there is a batch dimension um, for the data. So with these assumptions, we can make uh, all the transformations work uh, consistently uh, together. And one thing uh, to note is that uh, when we do uh, customizing the, when we want to customize these transformations, uh, we shouldn't set the property of, of the instances because the instance of the transform here uh, is constructed on the main process and uh, the actual call uh, method is actually running on the multiple process uh, context if we use the uh, PyTorch data loader. Uh, so writing property in, in the sub processes will not uh, uh, work in that case. Okay, so briefly mentioned the, the compose method is useful to stack a sequence of um, transforms and could use this uh, uh, as if it's just a single callable transform. Just, uh, I just wanted to highlight that we can set the random state uh, to the compose instance. So it will automatically find uh, all the uh, randomizable transforms, uh, uh, transformations uh, in the list and set the seeds properly. Uh, dictionary based transforms. I think uh, I'm sure you've seen this uh, a lot in the notebooks already. And uh, they are a wrapper of the array based ones. And we are following this naming convention. So transform name plus D uh, to denote that this transform will accept uh, dictionary-based data input. And it's important that when you uh, make your own uh, transformations, uh, we should always uh, make a copy of the data dict and update this dict, uh, return this new one. Uh, so that for multiple epochs of training, we apply the same transformation uh, with same uh, data dictionary content. about the determinism uh, for reproducible pre-processing we could set uh, the transform random states so that's everything you need to do but for global determinism uh, still you need to use this monai utility function to set uh, this random state for for everything uh, so in this case it's a uh, mainly for numpy and pytorch I just wanted to note that a given a specific platform and PyTorch release, if you repeat uh, your training experiment, uh, probably it's gonna be uh, deterministic, but there's no guarantee across uh, different platforms. And these are some basic usages. I think I can skip this. Uh, constructing data input, uh, resizing, and the single item output. So in this case, I just want to mention quickly, uh, if we use random crop with multiple samples, in this case, it's four samples, it will generate a list of four image patches, right? So when we compose this crop function, random cropping of multiple samples uh, with uh, resize, actually the resize will, will do the job to uh, apply uh, the actual resizing uh, to each of the uh, crop the samples. As a result, uh, we will have four random patches. So this uh, this is done uh, in the compose function. So this kind of implementation could uh, allow us to uh, have a flexible image level 
and uh, patch level transforms. For example, uh, to generate a balanced foreground and background samples uh, for e from each image, uh, we, uh, we could do it uh, at, at one call uh, with multiple samples. Okay. So, and also I'd like to mention that there are more than 70 transforms in the code base. And combined with this uh, high performance data set, we could build uh, quite powerful pre-processing pipelines already. And I will show you something uh, about the post-processing transforms uh, in the notebook. Also, uh, Monai uh, maintains an adapter to support third-party transformation libraries uh, for Torch.io, Batch Generator, Rising, uh, IDK. And there's a notebook uh, in Monai tutorials repository uh, to demonstrate those. So for this section, I, I only covered some of the component level APIs. Uh, there are more uh, tutorials and documentations. Uh, the relevant notebooks are Lab3 datasets and Lab3 post transforms. So I think uh, now please go to the Lab3 notebooks and uh, I will have uh, more detailed uh, explanations about this uh, after you go through this. And please remember after this bootcamp, you still have access to these notebooks. Uh, and uh, we will also update uh, the latest uh, modifications and push it uh, to the public repo. Uh, in this, uh, Lab3 uh, data set. Uh, we are uh, looking at uh, some toy uh, uh, examples of how items and transforms are passed into a data set and uh, compatible with the uh, data loader, a PyTorch building data loader, and uh, we construct some pseudo uh, slow transforms and we show how uh, the cache a mechanism could improve uh, the performance uh, if we have uh, multiple epochs. And a little bit about uh, the high, higher level interface ready to use uh, public data set, automatic downloading and uh, specifying uh, training or validation sections, etc. So this is a, a simple uh, examples of uh, those APIs. And the other uh, notebook uh, is about uh, sliding window inferences and uh, post-processing. And here again, we start with a, a toy example, a model just to add value to the input uh, image window. Uh, and then and here we construct uh, this sliding window inference. Uh, it's uh, actually implemented uh, as uh, with the input of the original image and uh, the user could specify uh, the, the predictor, uh, the model that you want to use uh, in the sliding window inference and specify the spatial size uh, go through uh, the original image. Uh, so you can play with the uh, parameters to see the different uh, effects of overlapping, non-overlapping. And also we support uh, Gaussian weighted uh, windows uh, so that when we have uh, overlapping areas, uh, it will uh, make the artifact uh, less a fewer uh, artifacts in that case. Uh, there's a comparison of this uh, in this toy example. And uh, the next section is actually a slightly more realistic one uh, uh, based on a, a gently trained model uh, for spleen segmentation from, uh, from CT. And in this case, it will uh, set up the uh, transformation pipeline, uh, data set, data loader as usual, and then uh, load uh, pre-trained uh, weights um, and use it for inference. So these are uh, standard PyTorch uh, approach. And this is a demonstration of the sliding window inference. 
uh, could tune the parameter to see uh, how different window size would affect the final output. Also, uh, we demonstrate a few uh, post-processing transforms uh, to uh, remove the, the noisy um, uh, segmentation result. Uh, so in this case, uh, because the model is uh, only trained for 30 epochs, I think, uh, ideally we would train it for uh, 600 epochs. Uh, it will provide some imperfect uh, uh, segmentations and we could use a uh, connected component analysis, uh, which is uh, one of the transforms in Monai uh, to identify uh, the major region. And we can also detect the simple algorithms to detect the contour. So this is basically used for diagnostic purposes uh, to show you the boundary uh, regions uh, we can visualize them uh, together with the original image. And this uh, tensorboard section is actually not included uh, in the current uh, notebook. Uh, but I, I'd like to mention that we have a support uh, for visualizing 3D images as uh, 2D uh, animations. So the usage is quite simple. Uh, from the Torch tensorboard import uh, summary writer, and then put the model output uh, here as the input to the visualize, visualizer and set some text. And here I locally run this uh, TensorBot server and uh, showing some of the outcome uh, I prepared beforehand. Uh, so one command is uh, writing the probabilities, um, specifying two channels. Uh, this corresponding to uh, two sections here uh, in the TensorBot. One is showing background uh, probability. So brighter means uh, high probability of a background. As you can see, uh, it has some uh, mis-segmentation because it's uh, not trained properly uh, on purpose. And here, this is the foreground prediction. And also could visualize the uh, combine the result, uh, uh, original image, and uh, predicted the uh, contour. Okay, I think that's everything I'd like to cover.